Hello everybody, Drywall Repairman here. We're just doing a video on a laundry room. They had to open up the wall. The plumber had to reroute some plumbing pipes, water lines. So now we have to patch in this area. First step in any drywall projects, go ahead and mask. I like to use this two inch tape, mask the baseboards, and then just put some plastic down. If you don't have plastic, you can use tarps, an old sheet, anything just to catch your mess sheetrock is messy in the ideal world i would just like a nice big square patch here there's a lot of detail work around electrical plumbing gas there's a lot of stuff going on here it's also a tight room in a little hallway then it's to the side laundry room so i'm just going to piece in this area a lot of guys like to come in with a full sheet of drywall, put it up against the wall. They use a router, cut all their holes. These routers are quick and efficient, but they make a lot of dust. So I'm doing this old school way. I'm going to use a handsaw, cut everything out by hand. It takes longer. And also I'm going to piece it in. I'm doing piecemeal here. Uh, sometimes it's easier to do pieces in here because you can see I can get one strip here, one strip there, one strip there. Ideal world, you want to cut it out like a four foot high by five foot section and just do a whole sheet. But then there's a lot more detail work. So I'm just going to piece it in. A lot of guys might criticize this, but hey, it works nice for me because I'm going to have to do some measurings around some pipes that are not center, drain pipes, a clean out. A water box there's a lot of detail cuts going here so I'm just gonna take my time first step you always want to do after you've done masking then you want to mark your studs you also want to cut back the sheetrock if there's a stud close by you want to cut it center to the stud I'm just taking a piece of flat piece of wood gives me a good level edge and then I'm just gonna pencil it and then I'm gonna cut it back with a razor blade you could use a sawzall and all that but a razor blade doesn't make a lot of dust the plumber also cut the area kind of at a diagonal, so I got to square it up because I'm going to be installing square sheetrock. Get everything cut back once you get everything cut back then you're gonna have to add backing I like to use one by twos some guys like to use two by fours I carry a bunch of one by twos with me in my truck because they're easy to work with depending on the depth of the wall these one by twos seem to work for every situation I'm in you could also do nice two by four four foot sections whatever you have but you have to add backing backing is the most important piece there's some neat little metal tab backings that they sell, but the go-to items, just get yourself some wood backing, one by twos, two by fours, wood sheeting. You're just gonna have to have something to screw to. As you see on the patch on the left side, I don't wanna take it all the way to the angle because then we're doing angle work. So I'm gonna have to add backing to the left side and to any side there's no wood. Extra backing makes a strong patch. You need to be able to secure the new sheetrock and the old sheetrock together. This transition togetherness won't crack out. That's where you're gonna get the trouble areas where the two sheets meet each other. If there's flexibility or movement, you're gonna get a crack. So we always put backing. I also like to mask off these wires wire boxes i like to tape them down really good so no mud gets in there trust me i've been shocked more than once from mud getting in these boxes so i really like to tape up these boxes if you're not careful you can just turn off the power but i'm not trying to work in a dark room just take your time this is the most important part is prepping and sheet rocking getting everything ready adding backing adding screws just take your time. Like I said, I'm going to piece this in. I'm going to do like two or three pieces. Most situations, this is the ideal thing to do. A lot of guys like to just do one large piece. One large piece is good if you have a router 
but I don't want to make a lot of dust and it's hard to get a full sheet of drywall in this room. So I'm just going to piece it in. It makes cutting around all these pipes and drains and everything that's going on here easier for me. So it's just going to be a piece it in, piece it in. It creates more taping joints, but it's fine because I'm going to turn around and mud over everything. It's just going to be one large patch on the wall when I do a first coat, second coat, and texture. So no problem with piecing it in. It's going to be a strong, strong patch once I mud it in. But go through it, check everything, take your time with it. A lot of screws, add extra backing. Put screws in your bottom studs, your top studs, and the old sheetrock to tighten up the old sheetrock. Insulation around the pipes, I always push it back. I don't like insulation around pipes that condensate and sweat, but the homeowner insisted on keeping the insulation in here, so we're going to do what the homeowner does. Metal brackets and stuff, if you're unable to get a screw through the bracket, you're going to have to put wood backing so you're able to get screws in the sheetrock to secure both sides of the sheetrock. But basically, just follow along this video. It's going to be a very long video, almost an hour long. So I'm not going to talk your head off with the step process. If you watch plenty of my videos, you're going to know the step process. It's just kind of like a watch and learn video. It's always the same process. Techniques change. This is just a drywall repair channel. And we're just showing you the steps that I do. Other people have opinions. Other people have different techniques. The only technique worth doing is not getting callbacks and doing a perfect job. I am a licensed drywaller. I do work in the field with myself, so I do what I can and I try to make the job as simple as possible without making a mess. Take it easy and just get the job done with no callbacks. But this is just my process of doing it. Of course, there's always better ways of doing things, just like everything in life. But this is the way I'm doing it and how I'm comfortable doing it. And I do what I'm comfortable with, and that's about it. But go ahead and watch this video. Just follow along. I also put notes on top to just basically show you the steps I'm doing. But just go ahead and watch and learn. I'm going to be creating more videos as the channel grows. We're finally getting some hours, watch time hours in, and more subscribers. So I'm going to create more videos as the, as the channel grows. I work in the field, so it's hard for me to always make videos in the field. I wish I can make videos all day long. But I just make videos on jobs whenever I get a free moment and I'm able to set up a camera close by and just videotape as I'm working. I work alone. If I had somebody with me, maybe I can have someone record me and help me. But I work alone, so I just set up the camera as I'm working. And then I'm just going to go through here and talk just to do some step process on some of the videos but mostly it's watch and learn you kind of get the idea people can tell you how to do drywall you can watch all the videos you want but there's still technique and a skill especially the mudding and texturing but at least you can watch these videos in the channel and see if it's something you're able to do yourself or at least start and get it somewhat done and then hire a professional to come in and finish that way you can save some money these videos make the job look easy, but it is tedious. This is an hour long video, but after editing everything, this is about a two or three hour job. So if you got two or three hours to give to a job, then go ahead and do it yourself. But sometimes it's better just to hire a professional and get it done correctly. That way you don't have no problems and issues, especially with matching textures on patches like this. But hey, please go ahead and watch this video. It's gonna be about an hour long video step process watch and learn and please subscribe and like you can comment you could even give me hate comments i don't care everybody's a critic but hey i'm doing it and you're watching it
Also, when you're hanging your sheetrock, add plenty of screws. Don't be shy about the screws. It's easier to add a few extra. That way you know the patch is secure. Always add screws on the outside existing wall also to tighten it up. Add plenty of screws. Once you get all the screws installed, double check your patches. Make sure all the screws you put in are sunk in. They're recessed. You don't want a bunch of screw heads sticking out as you're mudding because you're going to hit those and create chatters in your mud work. Once you get all the screws in, always go through and scrape your patches down with a six inch knife. Scrape it down, get all the goobers and stuff off of it so the tape sits on nicely. I use a fiberglass mesh tape. On this one, I'm just using a basic spray glue. I like tape sometimes has trouble sticking. So I just do spray glue. You're not just putting on a ton of spray glue. You're just tacking on and a fiberglass mesh tape will stick to this glue. It's just helping me out because there's a lot of tape seams here. So I don't want to tape it and then turn around mix mud and some of the tape fell off. So I just use a spray glue. It's a good thing. It's an optional thing you have to do. It's not necessary. But go through, always use fiberglass mesh tape. Fiberglass, fiberglass, fiberglass mesh tape is the best stuff to use for patchwork and repairs. A lot of my other videos, I always say this, there's paper tape out there that's meant for angles and a special tool that puts on the paper tape. Some jobs call for paper tape, like fire taping and stuff like that. But on your repair work, use a fiberglass mesh tape. It's airproof. You don't get blisters. You're less likely to get any cracks. Stronger material. Fiberglass is stronger than paper. It's perfect for repair work. Pretty much it's perfect for any job. If I was doing like a 10, 20 sheet or more job, then I might use paper tape because I'm going to use a bazooka that puts on... The mud with the tape perfectly. If you don't get enough mud behind paper tape, you're going to get blisters. So it's more of a professional type taping when you're using paper tape. So go ahead and just buy yourself a fiberglass roll of mesh tape. 100 foot, 300 foot, 500 foot. They sell different types. There's a lot of different types out there. Yellow ones, blue ones, green ones. Just get the regular fiberglass mesh tape for your drywall repair projects. Easy go-to material. And you're less likely to have any problems or errors after you mud. Get everything all taped up. Double check everything. Make sure you got every gap taped up. Every seam. Everything. Double check your work. If you need be, push down with your 6 inch knife to make sure there's no bubbles in the tape. And it's pressed down nicely against the sheetrock. Once you get it all fiberglass, then you're ready to first coat. First coat, first coat, first coat. I always recommend everybody do first coat. Just use an all-purpose joint compound. All-purpose joint compounds are easier to work with. They do have to dry overnight. So you can only do a first coat, and then you're going to have to let it set up overnight, and then you're going to have to sand in between coats. With a joint compound, if you're a beginner at mudding, if you make mistakes, you can sand away your mistakes. That's why you want to use a joint compound. If you make a mistake, you can sand away your mistakes. I'm using a quick set mud. This is more intermediate, professional type materials. It's a powder form. You add water. You mix it up by a pan or a half a bucket or a bucket, depending on the project. And you have to put on the materials before it starts setting up. It's a stronger material. So once it sets up, it sets up like a cement. Once it sets up, you cannot manipulate it. You can't sand it easily. It's more of a professional grade material. So if you never mudded before, don't attempt to use any type of quick set muds. It's a professional grade material. I have to use it because I have to finish these jobs in one trip. I basically pre-fill, pushing it inside the gaps of the fiberglass to get it inside the gaps. Get it all pressed in. And then I'm going to turn around and do a nice first coat. I'm first coating. I'm not putting it on super heavy. I'm just coating the patch area. And I use a 12-inch knife. I know a lot of guys out there have different types of knives. I got an 8-inch, 10-inch, 12-inch, 14, 16, 20-inch knives. Hey, that's nice to have all those nice trophy tools. But if you're just doing a simple job, the best knife to own is a 12-inch drywall knife and a 6-inch drywall knife. 
That's all you need. You don't need a bunch of different knives. You got to learn how to use one knife before you buy another knife. So good go-to 6 inch and a 12 inch knife and a regular drywall pan will last you a long time. Get everything first coated. Like I said, if you're using joint compounds, you're going to have to let your first coat dry overnight. Once it dries, then you turn around and sand it either with a 80 grit to 120 grit, and then you're going to have to do a tight second coat. After you do your second coat, same thing. You're going to have to sand it in between coats, and then if it still looks rough, then you're going to do a tight third coat. I'm using quick set mud, so this is how I do it. If you're not comfortable with mudding, you don't think you have what it takes, always hire a professional. These videos are more to show you the process. H hire a professional. We make it look easy, but you are playing with mud. You're going to make a big old mess. So if you're comfortable getting your hands dirty, being covered with mud and water, sweating, making a big old mess, then have at it. Practice makes perfect. This is not something you just watch this YouTube video and all, all of a sudden you're ready to start mudding. Cut around the detail. It's real tedious. Just take your time. You're not gooping up the mud. I put the mud on heavy and then I just trowel it down to take off the extra mud. Just a nice tight skim coat's all you need. It's easier to add coats. You can't take away coats. So it's easier to add a third coat or fourth coat if need be. If there's a big bulge on the wall, it's harder to get rid of or make a big bulge on the wall disappear because you put the mud on too heavy. But go ahead, we're just going to let this dry, set up, and then we're going to do the same process, second coat. I'm using hot mud, so I have to slick it out with a sponge and a six inch knife in between coats. After I get it second coated with my jobs, I can get away with doing two coats and it looks great. Then you're ready for texture. If you're doing it yourself, you might need a third tight skim coat to make it look good. Also texturing, you might not know how to texture, you not might be comfortable texturing yourself. You can at least leave the patch smooth, at least the patch is sealed and ready to go and then maybe you hire a professional later on to do the texture matching. Right, we're just going to go through here and watch, we're just going to get it all first coated, second coated and then we're going to get it texture prep and then we're going to do a skip trowel texture. Skip trowel texture here is a texture in this house, so we're matching the textures. So it's just a hand texture, it's really nothing to it. And that I'm using a regular joint compound. Always use joint compounds for your textures, never use quick set muds for your textures.
Your very last step before texture process, you want to check all your baseboards. Anything needs to be cocked in. It's easier to cock it in now, or you can cock it in after your texture dries. Since this is only a one trip job for me, I cock in my work for the homeowner. It makes a nice, perfect job. The painter can also do this, but I like to cock it in, just make a nice, clean job. Kind of give it the wow factor. It's perfect. Cocked in baseboard, cock in angles. These pipes, I'll even cock around them. Make everything nice. Get everything cleaned up before texture. You don't want a bunch of stuff falling in your new textured wall. So clean it up. Basically treat it like you're finishing up the job, just leaving a smooth patch. If the patch is perfectly smooth, if I paint it right now, would it be a perfect smooth patch? If yes, then it's ready for texture. Texture is just a cosmetic covering. It doesn't fix any bad mud work, imperfections, deep areas, stuff like that. So basically you want the patch perfectly smooth, everything clean and ready, no goobers, nothing on the wall. Then you're ready for a texture design. Maybe your location, you just have a smooth wall. That's great. All you would do is your next coat, you just skim it out real tight with a joint compound and leave it smooth. This job, I got to match the texture. So I got to match what's here. And that's just a skip trail hand texture in a newer home. But just detail work here. Like I said, I'm putting caulking around pipes. You don't have to do this. I'm kind of going the extra mile here since it's a homeowner that I worked with before. So I'm giving them a good job. Clean, taking my time. I'm no hurry. I have nowhere else to go except concentrate on this patch. I know we did a lot of work with this patch, piecing it in, but it all comes out beautiful once you mud it. The, the art is in the mudding. Mudding it, mudding it, mudding it. I think I'd compare drywall mudding, patching, kind of like a person that works on a car that got in an accident. They have to do Bondo. Bondoing a big dent in a fender, mudding it with Bondo. That's basically what we're doing. We're just putting a mud and filling in the area that needs filled in, feathering it out. So that's what we're doing here with the mud work. As you can see, this patch is pretty smooth, perfect. Go ahead, clean up, cock the angles, just make a nice job. But your next step after you get it all cleaned up is that your next step, you're going to have to mud texture. You're going to use a regular joint compound. Use joint compounds, thin down joint compounds. But this is a skip trail. I do it with a six inch knife for a small area. A lot of guys use bigger knives. That's fine for brand new walls when you're texturing out 10, 20, 50 sheets at a time. But for one little area like this with a lot of detail, a six inch knife, a straight six inch knife and thin down joint compounds will give you a perfect skip trail design. This is more of a newer texture in the last 20 years, 30 years at most. So depending on your area, you might have a different type of texture. Skip trowel, I like to start on the outside edge of the existing texture and it kind of creates the pattern I need. Sometimes it takes some practice to get this texturing down, but once you figure it out, it's an easy texture to do. Easy and clean. But we're just gonna get this little skip troweled up. Once you get it all textured up, go ahead and clean up your work area. Wipe everything down with a clean, wet rag. Don't use your dirty sponge that you use to mix up your muds with. That, that'll leave a white residue on everything. So always use clean rags, clean water, wipe everything down. Let your work area completely dry at least 24 hours. So once you get it all complete, clean up the room and just stay out of the room for 24 hours until it sets up. And then you can come back the next day or thereafter and do your painting process.
Once you get it all textured, double check your work area. This one I'm feathering it out past the patch area to blend into the existing. Checking my angles, my base area, the round detail, stuff like that. You always want to check all that detail stuff at the very end. Make sure you got plenty of texture in the areas, no light spots. Fade it out to the existing. Basically, you just let this dry overnight. Your next step after this for painting, you're going to have to lightly sand the texture. Sanding, you just use 150 grit to 220 grit or a fine or medium sanding block. You lightly sand the area. You're not grinding it down. You're not trying to remove the texture by sanding. You're just gliding over it lightly with the sandpaper or sanding block just to knock the burrs and the grit out of the texture. And then you're going to have to primer. Always primer drywall. Use a PVA drywall sealer or Kills 2 latex primer before paint. Always, always use a sealer or a primer before paint on drywall patches.